Happy New Year and welcome back to another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This mechanism contains several individual steps that probably look very similar to ones you would have learned about in an organic chemistry course. The first being an addition to an alkene. Importantly, anytime you have an acid and an alkene, it is possible for the alkene to act as a nucleophile towards the protons and different acids. So the first step in this reaction is actually going to be to protonate this alkene. And it's going to add in a Markovnikov fashion, meaning that the proton is actually going to add to the carbon which has the most hydrogens already bound to that carbon. So in this case, it would be this top carbon at the top of this alkene, which means the product of this first step of protonating that alkene is going to end up with a carbocation at the carbon in the center between these three different methyl groups. So there's going to be a carbocation or an electrophilic carbon at this position. And this is important because the next step is actually going to be a nucleophilic attack by the carbon monoxide. Remember that carbon monoxide, if you're to draw the Lewis structure of this, there's a triple bond between carbon and oxygen. Each of these atoms contains a lone pair of electrons. And importantly, if you're to calculate the formal charge at each atom, you would see that there's a positive charge on the oxygen and a negative charge on the carbon, which means that this carbon is nucleophilic and will attack things like carbocations. So that's the step that happens next, where you would get the nucleophilic attack of this carbocation to generate a new quaternary carbon where now we're starting to generate most of our final product because now we have our three methyl groups as well as CO or carbon monoxide attached at this position where the oxygen is still positive. And this oxygen being positive turbocharges the attack of this carbon. So this makes this carbon very electrophilic. So even a nucleophile like water, for example, can come in and attack at this carbon position to kick up these pi electrons and leave us with a carbonyl carbon. So the product of this transformation is starting to look very similar to our final product, except for we still have a protonated oxygen that is not present in our final product. So in this case, we have our C, which now has our CO, which we generated here. And then we have OH2 on this side from where the water attacked, which means that this is now positively charged at this oxygen. And then we still have our methyl group here. So then the final step in this transformation is going to be another water molecule will come and act as a nucleophile and deprotonate this species here in order to generate our neutral carboxylic acid functional group and give us our final product. Now, while you may have never seen this individual transformation, it is important to note that each of these steps you've probably seen previously, where you have protonation of the alkene, nucleophilic attack from carbon monoxide, and then subsequently water also attacking as a nucleophile, and then finally deprotonating to give us our carboxylic acid. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.